Y'all keep tagging me in these threads on Twitter flooded with hot takes about how you should never use a USB mic, that XLR mics are the way to go. This is not entirely true. Sennheiser has sponsored this video showing off their new profile USB microphone so that I can tell you why. In reality, most people using USB microphones in the content creation scene, streaming, YouTube videos, TikToks, even, you know, teleconferencing and telehealth and teaching, all those kinds of things, they're just taking their XLR microphone and plugging it into a super cheap or basic USB audio interface. They're not doing anything in the analog realm that would require an analog workflow. They're, they're, they're not doing anything with it. And in many cases, especially for those non-content creation scenarios or those beginner or not just beginner, I want to get, get away from that kind of misnomer, but in the, in the one-person show kind of content creation scenario, USB microphones are superior. Personally, in my setup, I, I won't hide from the fact that I primarily use XLR microphones at my main desk and at a secondary desk where I have specific microphones I'm using for specific purposes, and I am routing those through analog preamps and other analog processing hardware. But all of my secondary setups that I do a lot of my videos at, a lot of my you know gaming, my calling, my, my podcasting even, and a lot of the voiceover work that I've done in the past few videos... Those are done on USB microphones where I just need to be able to plug it in and know that it works without any extra points of failure, any extra hardware setup, anything like that. And the voiceover segments that I've been doing for the past few videos have been done on USB microphones. It's been on this one. I couldn't tell you what it was because it wasn't released yet. That's what we were working with. USB microphones are great, as dumb as this is going to sound, because there is less to mess up. In the world of content creation, live streaming, podcasting, not only do things move really, really fast and you got to, you know, turn out videos, turn out podcasts, turn out interviews, whatever, you often only get one shot at certain things. There are plenty of cases where I've messed up audio on recordings of people with people I've interviewed or with, you know, takes of videos where I had exactly something specific to say or I had a short window to really get a video made in a way that it would still be timely. And by messing up that audio, that, that content was just gone. I couldn't do anything with it. There, there, there was no recreating the moment, especially with you know live streaming. There was no re-recording that interview in the same way. I messed it up. And by eliminating as many possible points of failure in your workflow, you're going to speed things up. And which is why I have never in my entire career in which I've done a fair bit of consultation for people setting up their, especially during the pandemic, their work from home setups for, for conferencing, for teaching, for... Uh, telehealth for all those kinds of things, I've never really once recommended someone an XLR microphone if they weren't using it before. I recommended them a USB one because it's one piece of hardware. You plug in one cable. You don't plug in your your microphone to a cable that you have to buy separately to an interface that has to connect to USB and then you got to figure out uh, it's just one. And especially for people who do any sort of portable traveling with laptops or iPads or something like that, y you want the one cable set up. There's this weird myth that if you do professional audio work that you would never use a USB microphone. This isn't really true. If you're someone who does voiceover work or for commercials, for TV, uh, even the people hosting TV shows, you know, the, the, the late night talk show host that got sent home during the pandemic who gets sent doing work from home. If you're not already versed in these things, if you're not already doing, you know, professional analog audio, your production staff is not going to send you home with an XLR mic and hope that you figure it out and do it right. They're going to send you home with a USB microphone and tell you how to use it and lock you into that easy-to-use workflow. That's, that's just how it goes. And you can create many, many years' worth of professional audio career work with this kind of hardware. Because internally, you, if you buy a good microphone, if you buy one that has good resale value should you decide to upgrade to XLR or switch microphones, or you buy one that's from a reputable company like Sennheiser, legends in the audio space. My primary, you know, big on camera microphone is their MKH-416 shotgun, which is also used in plenty of voiceover booths. You're getting a microphone that sounds great. Ultimately, whether you're making music, whether you're doing voiceover, whether you're creating content, the gear you use doesn't matter as long as you're getting the result that you want and you have the workflow and the control that you want. Gear matters in the sense that you need to buy the or acquire, work towards, save up for the, the right piece of gear that does what you need to, the right tool for the right job in the workflow that isn't going to get in your way. And more often I see people who talk about bad USB microphones. They just get some cheap $20 thing that sounds crap out of the box that they spend all of their time kind of fighting and fine-tuning and trying to make work. 
garbage in, garbage out. You buy a good USB microphone that gives you the results that you want right out of the box or with a little fine tuning, which is kind of always required for microphones. You can't tune every microphone to every individual voice. It could last you forever till the thing dies. So in that vein, this is Sennheiser's Profile USB microphone. This is their first USB microphone endeavor, and I'm pretty impressed with it. It uses the Sennheiser KE-10 capsule inside, which is a cardioid pickup pattern. It's designed for solo streamers, podcasters, YouTubers, things like that, to provide the easiest and the most focused workflow possible, because it's... A, it, 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 uh, that would be the one word I would describe this microphone. Of all things, it is focused. It is small. It is thin. It's meant to kind of stay out of your way, not be a huge intrusive thing in your camera shot. I have it coming from the side, so it's actually a little more in camera than it needs to be just because of how my desk is laid out, which you can check out the previous video if you want to see why that is. And... Uh, it, it's pretty solid. Everything is front and center. You have dials on the front for your microphone gain, for your monitoring audio for microphone versus PC sound, as well as just a level for the headphones and a mute button. You're still going to have a little handling sound, but all mute buttons on the microphones are going to be there. And on the back, you have a USB-C connection and your headphone jack. The yoke itself has a really cool feature. I'm going to, I'm going to, commit a video sin and have some handling noise in here but as you rotate the microphone it has a a i'm going to call it a soft stop because it's a hard stop the microphone does not go any further but it's a soft a little like padded rubber bit to keep you from turning the microphone enough to break your usb cable or your headphone jack which basically every microphone with this kind of yoke design that i've seen lets you do it would let you bend it back so that you can break your usb port and i've gotten comments i've seen posts from people who either dropped it whose pet hit it or they just weren't paying attention and bent it and they broke that usb cable this microphone is very considerate and at least tries to stop you from doing so which is pretty cool they sent this mic arm as part of the optional streamers kit you can buy the microphone with it is a small slender arm with a cable channel that runs through it so the cable stays exactly where you want and the microphone locks in three different points but it doesn't require any effort like It just, it just stays where you want it to without needing to really fight it or for it to sag over time. It's pretty impressive, and it's fairly slim, uh, which is is fairly nice. Uh, most of these in this style are the scissor arm that takes up a lot more space, shows up a lot more on camera. This is very low profile. And they call this a boom arm, and I think they're selling themselves a little short here because if you have the reach for it, if your desk is deep enough or you have it at an angle or something, it can actually work as a low profile arm too, which has become very desirable lately. And the mic allows you to flip it up completely and run it as low profile if you want, which is pretty neat. If you buy it without the microphone on, it comes with the standard desk stand, which I'm going to tell you not to use unless you're doing like music or something like that, which is why they built a streamers kit that has the mic arm because getting it up close to your mouth is super important as we'll talk about in a moment uh, but it does have all your standard mounting threads on the bottom if you want to mount it to whatever you know grip gear you might have usual specs for this microphone it has 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz frequency re response range 44.1 and 48 kilohertz sampling modes at 16 and 24 bit it connects through USB-C which is Desirable to everyone these days, as you all say in all of my other microphone reviews. The standard mic kit comes with a 1.2 meter cable. The streamer kit with the mic arm comes with a 3 meter cable, which is nice to see. It's slim enough that it's great for teleconferencing, teaching, and all that jazz for professional uses where it's not going to be this big gamery looking thing that is offensive and distracting to whoever you're chatting with, which is is very important these days. I'm trying more and more to cover cover those kinds of angles because... Not a lot of people do. It's not all about your Twitch streams and things like that. And I know I say that while, you know, recording from my arcade video rental store style studio, but it's not for everyone. This angle might look ridiculous because I have my iPad on my desk, but if you do your video conferencing or calling or even your content creation on a mobile device, like a phone or a tablet, an iPad, something with USB-C device compatibility, the profile will work with it too. This is recorded directly onto my iPad Pro. It's not even an M1 model. Nice. Enjoy the look at my ceiling, I guess. The point I'm ultimately trying to make with this video is that USB microphones are fine. <laughs> More than fine. They, they, they should be the default option for just about everybody in this space. Now, if you're planning on going into radio stations with the gear that you have, this isn't a real scenario, or shooting films or something, maybe you should be investing in XLR kits that are appropriate to the gigs you're going with. But for, for people wanting to start streaming make YouTube videos to a podcast or teach online, those kinds of things. Headset mics often leave a little too much to be desired, and XLR mics tend to be a little too cumbersome for setup for 
obvious reasons at this point. USB microphones are a wonderful solution that could last you your entire career if you use it right. So how do you use it right? I'm glad you asked. Here are five tips to get the most out of USB microphones. First and foremost, use your rear panel USB ports and separate your ports for separate audio and video devices like webcams or capture devices. You can use complex software like USB TreeView if you really want to identify which ports are on which chipsets so you can truly balance it out. But, but effectively, you know, get your microphone as far away physically in ports from your video devices to ensure that they're not competing with each other for latency or bandwidth or things like that. And again, you want to use your rear ports. Those are going to be directly connected to your motherboard. They're going to be most grounded and shielded for any sort of interference or noise, and they will power your microphone the best. Often front panel ports do not power things, you know, as best as they could. And if you need to, you can totally buy a USB extension cable and USB-C or USB-A to use with a microphone. And generally speaking, especially again, if you're using the rear ports, it's not going to cause you any issues. Mount it close. Mount the microphone close to you and at an angle. Within six inches is usually what's recommended for these USB condenser capsules as you get the proximity effect, which is the closer you get to the microphone, kind of the, the warmer and clearer response you get. Whereas the further away you get from it, the more that sound kind of falls off. And you have to project more, which is going to bounce off your walls more and create a little bit of reverb, things like that. You don't want that. You want to keep it up close and you want to keep it at, a, at an angle because otherwise you might have to get a pop filter because if you have it, you know, right in front of your lips, please bring pizza pronto as I rip off from podcastage. You don't want that. That's not... You know, that's not entirely the fault of this microphone. Every microphone is going to sound like that. You want to keep it at a 45 degree angle to your mouth so that your projection, all of your vocal frequencies are being picked up evenly, but you're not, you know, plosiving directly into your microphones with your P's and your B's and your... I will always recommend using your microphones with a microphone arm of some sort, not the desk stands for a couple reasons. First and foremost is they act as a shock absorber for when you're typing on your keyboard talking while typing or you're banging on your desk, it will help absorb, it won't eliminate all, at all always, but you know, it'll help absorb some of those sounds. It keeps it physically further away from those sounds, but also it helps you keep it up close to your mouth and you can control the angle and the distance that it's mounted at. When you just have it on your desk, it's usually going to be, you know, it might be off camera, which seems cool, but then you either got to crouch down or project more into it. It's not going to sound very good and it's going to be physically closer to your keyboard, your mouse, your desk, your chair, all those sources of unwanted sound. Whereas right here, the intimate way, this is the way to go. Number four, monitor your audio with headphones whenever possible when you're recording with a microphone, especially with the ones built in, of course, where you get the live preview. Obviously, this doesn't apply to all fields. I know telehealth, telemedicine, some conferencing scenarios, they actually don't allow you as a policy to use headphones because it's too distracting. I will personally always advocate against this rule and advocate for change of this rule because having someone you know that you're on a call with playing your audio back through their speakers and having that loop through their headphones and having to you know try to echo cancel that out and all of that that is far more distracting than someone wearing headphones would ever be period just as a universal rule i don't believe that that could be argued against but also as someone with adhd Hearing that whenever I'm on a call from someone, my ability to focus on even just a basic sentence being said goes completely out the window, which is a huge problem with telehealth. So I will advocate against this rule, but I know in some scenarios you can't use headphones. But when you can, use them to monitor your audio because it'll help you pick up on weird background sounds, uh, a connection issue, interference, anything that might be going wrong with your placement or the way you're using your microphone. You can catch it before it makes its way through your entire content so you can stop if you're interviewing someone or recording your podcast, you can stop ahead of time, fix it, and then go back and record and not try to clean it up later. Though AI audio tools are getting kind of ridiculous, and maybe we don't need to bother with proper uh, technique or or settings anymore. I I'll have a short link below where I demo this because it's just insane. And again, this microphone has dials to control your volume level for your headphones, which is great. And then a balance dial so you can balance in how much of yourself you hear looped back through versus you know, who you're talking to or your system sound or whatever, which is both great for balancing that when you're actually interviewing someone so you can still hear yourself just well enough, but also for when you're just kicking back and watching a movie or something. You don't want the random sounds your microphone picks up, although you could mute it, but you know, you don't want those sounds picked up when you're just kind of in the zone and you can just turn it all the way down, which is pretty nice. And lastly, if you're using your microphone with OBS for streaming or recording or another VST host on your system that can allow you to add audio filters in real time, follow my perfect stream audio playlist my guides there because I have tons of tips on gain staging and post-processing to get the best possible audio in your stream and video 
that would be way too much to go into here, but I highly recommend following uh, as a brief summary just for what you can apply universally here. Gain low, at least 50% or lower on the gain dial is recommended for cleanest sound on all USB mics. Uh, I have mine exactly at 50% here, which is fine. I come in at about minus six per my usual guides. Gain low and then project, talk louder, and then, you know, apply clean post-processing gain and compression and things like that. This microphone does have a green indicator when your audio is fine. It turns to yellow when you start clipping and talking too loudly, which I could barely do. And then when your audio is completely just garbage, it'll turn red, but I haven't been able to do that. No, you're not doing something wrong by using USB microphones. Yes, it's totally fine, even for professional use. I have been switching back and forth in this video between the process you know, with my post processing settings, which is just a little boost to the lows, a cut in the moodiness range, cut in the nasally ranges, and a boost in the presence. My usual workflow with a minus nine threshold and 3.5 to four to one compression uh, thresh ratio. Words are hard. I again, my video on post processing linked below, just so you could get a sound or a sample of how you could really make this microphone sound. Every microphone, if you want to get the best possible sound for your unique voice, because every single person's voice is unique and blah, blah, blah. I, you do a little post processing. You, you rarely use raw audio unless you're sending it to someone else to post process. You're not doing anything wrong. Even for professional work, USB microphones are completely fine. And I really want to see an end to these threads on Twitter because, oh boy, is it exhausting? And there are so many great USB microphones that like this that you could buy, use for 10, 15, 20 years of your career, and no one would know any different. No one needs to know that this isn't an XLR microphone, and if you use it right, it could outperform using an XLR microphone badly, just like with any other piece of gear. And I've been recording this whole video with a webcam, a beautiful 4K webcam with nice depth of field, mind you, but a webcam because it made more sense for this setup than a giant DSLR or something. That, that, that That's what these videos are about. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Check out the playlist in the description below to get the most out of your microphone and audio setup beyond what I showed in this video. And remember to be kind. Rewind. Links to all of the Sennheiser profile stuff so you can get one for yourself are in the description. Thanks to Sennheiser for sponsoring this video.